Most pedig felkér... Thank you very much, Mr. Kamel. I now give the floor to uh, Commissioner de Gucht. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I uh, understand uh, your concerns about the ACTA negotiations. Let me first recall that uh, we are negotiating this agreement in order to improve the protection of innovation made in Europe in all areas where intellectual property rights can be breached. If we want to remain a competitive economy, we will have to rely on innovation, creativity and brand exclusivity. This is one of our main comparative advantages on the world market. So we need the tools to ensure that this comparative advantage is adequately protected in our main export markets. We have tried to raise this issue for several years in multilateral organizations like the WTO or the World Intellectual Property Organization. But these attempts were systematically blocked by other countries. So uh, despite our preference for a truly global solution, we had no other choice but to engage into a coalition of the willing. The final agreement will only be binding on these countries that have signed. Although we would, of course, be happy if more countries, and especially emerging economies, could subsequently join. As I said during my hearing, these international negotiations are confidential. This is not unusual. Negotiations are about seeking an agreed outcome and require a minimum of confidentiality for each party to feel comfortable to make concessions and or to try options before finally setting for an agreement. On the other hand, I agree that the European Parliament needs to be adequately informed about the evolution of the negotiations. We are doing our utmost in two areas, to inform the Parliament and to convince our negotiating partners to agree with more transparency. Firstly, as regards information to the Parliament, we have provided you with the negotiating guidelines, full reports of negotiating rounds and, in general, all the relevant documents originating from DG Trade that have been shared with the Member States through the Trade Policy Committee. We have done this in accordance with the Framework Agreement. Also, ACTA has been discussed several times in INTA in the last three years. Let me add to this that the Commission organized two stakeholder conferences on ACTA in June 2008 and April 2009 which were open to all citizens, industry, NGOs and the media. Another public conference will be organized on the 22nd of March in Brussels. I understand that you may feel that this is not sufficient for you to have a clear picture on where we stand in these negotiations. I have uh, instructed my services to provide dedicated briefings with interested MEPs on all aspects of the negotiations. They will be at your disposal for discussion before and after each further negotiating round. Secondly, I realize that the best way for you to know what is going on in these negotiations would be to uh, read the draft negotiating text. This would give you a very clear picture of where exactly we are in those negotiations. As you probably know, there is an agreement amongst ACTA parties that the negotiating text can only be made public if all parties agree. The Commission is in favour of releasing the negotiating documents as soon as possible. However, a few ACTA negotiating parties remain opposed to an early release. I strongly disagree with their approach, but I cannot unilaterally breach a confidentiality commitment. My credibility as a negotiator is at stake. Nevertheless, I will see to it that at the next negotiating round in April, the Commission will vigorously push its negotiating partners to agree to release the text and I will raise European Parliament concerns bilaterally with ACTA parties like the US I am scheduled to meet before then. It is in the interest of all that everyone can have a clear idea of what exactly these negotiations are about and even more importantly also of what they are not about. Finally, as regards your concerns on substance, I would like to recall the main principles that drive the Commission in negotiating this agreement. First, the objective is to address large-scale infringements of intellectual property rights which have a significant commercial impact. 
it will not lead to limitation of civil liberties or harassment of consumers. Secondly, ACTA is only about enforcement of intellectual property rights. It will not include provisions modifying substantive intellectual property law, such as the creation of new rights or their scope of protection or their duration. However, it uh, should set minimum rules on how innovators can enforce their rights in courts at the borders or over the Internet. For example, a European fashion designer, when confronted with counterfeiting of his creations outside Europe, can ensure that his rights are adequately safeguarded abroad. Thirdly, ACTA must and will remain in line with the acquis communautaire, including the current level of harmonization of IPR enforcement. The e-commerce directive, the regulatory telecom framework and last but not least the applicable EU legislation on data protection and privacy. There will be no harmonization or changes to EU legislation through the back door. In this sense, ACTA will have no impact on European citizens since it will not create new obligations for the EU and no need for implementing legislation. However, it will provide our innovators increased protection in overseas markets. I am aware of the concerns expressed by some of you about the introduction of a compulsory three strikes rule or a graduated response to fight copyright infringements and internet piracy. Let me be very clear on this so there is no room for ambiguity. The three strike rule or graduated response systems are not compulsory in Europe. Different EU countries have different approaches and we want to keep this flexibility while fully respecting fundamental rights, freedoms and civil liberties. The EU does uh, not support and will not accept that ACTA creates an obligation to disconnect people from the